Today we come a long way and our efforts have paid off. We're at the moment where we've recovered the vehicle that we need and we have confirmed that John is inside. Plats mouth. Where's that at from Omaha? From Omaha, about 15 to 20 minutes away from here. He was a Vietnam vet, left everything out, didn't want to be a burden to anybody, he lost his wife six years ago. He got a colonoscopy bag or something. He had an issue with his colon, and the day after, maybe it was the medications that screwed him up. But yeah. He was the one after he left his house at 4 30 a.m. from a ring camera from the neighbor's house at 4 30 a.m 4 30 a.m how long has he been missing september of this year oh so he's only been missing a little bit so this is fresh fresh yeah yeah this yeah. is fresh you obviously know this it's going to pick up a different kind of a signal but it's a truck i mean how the hell are you going to miss it this is just you yeah we're not going to miss it at all the location oh. of the catfish restaurant is where he always goes to and eats like that's his favorite restaurant there but that would be the first place i would search catfish lake that, restaurant okay. Catfish old lake restaurant it's just she said it's about 10 minutes of a drive up okay um i don't know are you guys on i th I would, i'd rather find someone that's missing recently rather than someone 23 years ago yeah that's a fresh yeah 100 yeah the family needs answers now yeah. so she's up right now i can just give her a call yeah all right cool i think the we're, we're all in agreement Hello. Hi, Jennifer. It's uh, Jared Lysak. Hi, how are you? Hey, I'm doing well. Hey, uh, we just caught uh, wind about your uh, brother. Yeah, um, not my brother. My uh, stepdad's cut first cousin. He, They're like two days apart, so they're kind of like brothers. Okay. As you heard, we're up here in Omaha and over in Council Bluffs right now. We were going to take on a case tomorrow, but the... Uh, family has not gotten back a hold of me that we were hoping to work with them tomorrow. Yeah, I mean the thing with yours is, you know, it was September 3rd just a few weeks ago and you know, yeah. we, and it's really close so we have no problem skipping this one for now. We can come back to this one in, you know, a couple months or a year from now and I think that yours is really important that we need to get over to it right now. Okay. I don't think that he went too far from home. Um, from the sounds of it, he's very meticulous about the things that he does and puts away. He had gotten out of bed um, and left his pants and his shoes right at the bed, which is not like him. I mean, so he, he left without shoes, his wallet was still home, and his phone was still home. Right. So I don't think he went very far. <laughs> My first um, thing is it sounds like he likes to be at the uh, catfish restaurant quite a bit. Uh -huh. uh, so my first thought is right there on 34, right next to the Platte River, you have a pull-off at that lake there that goes around most of the lake, and there's a couple of entry points, and I think that that's my uh, first uh, most probable target that he might be in there. Okay. Yeah, because he knows the area really well, and he always went out for drives and stuff in the area. Uh -huh. So, I mean, he would know exactly what, you know, dock or whatever he if he did plan on driving off. Yeah, we can just start looking at the most, you know, plausible locations and start knocking them out. Okay. All right, uh, well, how about if you do this? How about if you uh, reach out to as many people as you can between uh, tonight and first thing tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. is what time we'll get started. And okay. uh, I've got your number, you've got mine. We'll, uh, okay. we'll pull into town first thing in the morning and then we'll just uh, start going from there. Okay, sounds great. All right, sounds good, thanks for your time. When it's fresh like this, yeah, we, we gotta go immediately, and it's right down the road. Yeah, so right now we're in Omaha, we're going down to Platts, Plattsville, is that what the town is? Uh, Plattsmith, the, and it's in Cass County. Yeah. And uh, the most recent news article says that the Cass County Sheriff's Office is asking the public for any information on the whereabouts of a Buccaneer Bay resident last seen on Friday afternoon. According to Sheriff William Brugerman, 
Deputies from his department at around 10 a.m. on Saturday responded to a report of a missing person identified as John Zarkowski, 72 years old, who lives on Ridgeway Road. A family member said that Zarkowski was last seen on Friday around 4.30 p.m. at that residence. It is believed Zarkowski left that residence in the early morning hours of Saturday driving a 2018 white Chevrolet Tahoe Nebraska license plate 20T188. We're going to jump over here, help this family first thing in the morning, and let's get a little bit of sleep right now. Yeah, but we'll be back here, you know, when we, as soon as we get a chance, we'll be back here to do this case. Yeah, 100%. If not, yeah. then, uh, yeah, KS Divers or somebody else Yeah, will be for sure. All right, let's go do it. Hey, good. Hey, uh, we're a uh, search and recovery uh, dive team that happens to be working some cold cases in the area, and we just caught wind of John uh, late last night, uh, and we're going to divert down there and go work on that for you guys today, um, seeing if we can meet up or if there's any information we can get from you that might help us out to help you. Sure. Um, what would you like to meet? Uh, so there's two locations that are of interest to me. Sounds like maybe uh, Haworth Park. Uh, Heroes Park or the boat ramp that's there in Plattsmouth? The family thought Haworth because they did reunions there. Um, I watched surveillance video from the real estate agency where he would he would have went by and I did not see his vehicle nope. come through there Okay. up till about 521 in the morning. <clears throat> So I'm not too sure he went there. Uh, Normally they choose the closest boat ramp where they think they'll never be found. So I'm leaning more towards the uh, boat ramp there in Plattsmouth. Yeah, you just want to go to the boat ramp? Yeah, yep. yeah, let's just meet at that boat ramp. Okay. I, think, I think that's the most likely right now if you've already looked at surveillance on towards the other one. Yeah, I didn't see anything. I'm waiting to hear from the toll booth yet. Uh, it's been two weeks. I don't know why, they, but they won't return my calls. Perfect. And by chance, have you have you heard of us? Do you know who we are? Nope. Okay. So uh, our organization is called Adventures with Purpose, and we travel the U.S. <laughs> yeah, and we, we travel the U.S. working uh, missing persons cold cases where they are in a vehicle believed to be underwater. In the past year, we've solved ten cold cases doing this. We have uh, little boats okay. with uh, sonar on it, and then we're also a dive team. So. If we identify the target in question, we're there to offer our services for free, whatever it is that you need, whether you need us to rig it and help from there, or if you have your own dive team, then we'll step aside and let you do that. And then we are documentary filmmakers as well, so we do record everything that we're doing, and we share this so that way other people can find out about our mission, and that's how we found out about this one. They reached out to us late last night as they heard that we were in town. Uh, who reached out to you? Uh, Jennifer Solberg reached out to us. And uh, she's also put us in touch with you, uh, Grant Zarkowski, John's nephew, and Bill with the uh, fisheries, daily fisheries, just in case we need to get onto uh, Catfish Lake. So that's kind of where we're starting our uh, morning yeah. based upon our uh, phone call from uh, at midnight last night. All right. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Thanks bye. This is Grant. Hey, Grant, Jared Lysak, Adventures with Purpose. How are you? Yes, sir. Very good. How are you? Hey, doing well. Hey, I just spoke with the uh, detective, and um, some information that we just had on that one is he said that he's still waiting for a lot of surveillance back. The only surveillance he's, he's really looked at was a surveillance from a real estate office towards the Haworth Park that you had mentioned. We had a security camera that in the time frame showed him going north on Highway 75 from where he lived. Okay. That we think. So... But yes, I agree with the officer that we did not have uh, anything from him going going there other than that would have been my best guess as to where he would have gone because that was a place he was very familiar with. We had uh, we occasionally had family reunions at that park. Okay, well, we're heading over. The, we're still in uh, the north side of Omaha right now at the boat ramp up here, so we're... Uh, Okay. We're getting ready to turn the key, and we're heading straight there. And like I said, we're meeting up with the officer, uh, with the detective, in about 30 minutes. So uh, you're welcome. Okay. You're welcome, I will, welcome to join us. Through. I'm headed down there, too, so I should be there in about 30 minutes, too. Okay, perfect. We'll all meet up, and let's uh, come up with a game plan and see if we can't find John today. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. We'll chat soon. If, if, if you want to take 75 into account... The only th the thing you're going to get is right here where we're at. It takes you right into Omaha. Yeah, so here, so Haworth Park is over here, just south of 
this and then you also have okay the catfish reservoir is also over here too okay so you have a few things to get to over there going north mm -hmm. okay. but if we don't want to cross any bridges then we're at this other boat ramp real quick here okay so anyway i say let's we're meeting them both there yeah yeah let's knock that out and then we can go from there and then we'll move north if we need to yep and, and any step forward is one step closer to head southwest it. on yep. dodge park road So the family wants you to check Hayworth Park too? Yeah. So they think Hayworth because that's where they had a lot of family reunions yeah. up there. It's probably not a bad idea. Yeah, but for but and the other thing too is I mean you guys just have so many quarries and bodies of water in this area. So when I first looked at it, I'm like, I need like two to three days in this area at least, but we only have one day today only because now we're mo moving over to Iowa tomorrow. So yeah, we'll uh, back the trailer up. We'll just uh, do our thing and okay. welcome to hang out for the day or uh, you know we, we can just call you when necessary. I got to meet with a detective at 11 to transfer some evidence, but... Okay, perfect. Yeah. Well, let me grab your number just in case you do need to take off. Well, you guys are a great resource. I've never even heard of you. Yeah, well, I'm thank you. The family found you. Yeah. As far as circumstances, why he left, do you know, like, do you have any insight on why he may have left, or...? I know the family told us that uh, he had said in the past, if you ever had any major health issues that you wouldn't want to live any longer so you guys have been to his residence um, is, is there anything that you guys find alarming like that gives you any type of lead on um, the conditions he left under like did, did he have his stuff or it appeared he left the house without his wallet and without his cell phone really it's possible he left with no shoes on he did have a wound vac because he just had surgery. Yeah. And came home on the third, and that wound vac was left behind. Oh, so we have his wound vac left behind, possibly no shoes, left his wallet and his cell phone. Yeah. So yeah, he 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 definitely was leaving, probably in that mind state of you know just trying to take care of himself so so nobody else did. That's good insight to have, you know, because in those circumstances we know. He's here somewhere. He's somewhere because he hasn't gone far. He doesn't have um, monetary resources, no shoes. You, you have a plan at that point. Yeah, you know? One star can't uh, communicate with the vehicles that tells us. Underwater. Well, either Maybe. that or in a remote location where yeah. cell service is not available. Yeah, because yeah, it, it, it was a 2018 Chevy Tahoe, correct? Yeah, so the OnStar services would have been in it. And even if they didn't have a subscription, OnStar can activate that. So they are either in a remote area or they're underwater. Well, we're, we're, we're here and we're going to do what we need to do. And um, it, it, it shouldn't take us long with these locations to rule them out. And please Great. feel free to stick around. Sure, and I'm glad to have you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I'm Doug. Grant. Grant. Zarkowski. Okay. I'm John's uh, nephew. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Jared's down there getting the boat ready. Okay. Um, yeah, we were just a few miles north, and um, obviously this one's fresher, and the 23-year-old one can wait, and, you know, this takes precedence at the moment. Okay. So uh, we'll do our best to check as many areas as we can. Um, there's quite a few places that we can check. And, okay. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll do our best. And if anything, we can at least give you answers on wh where he's not. Okay. You know, things. Yeah. one for me, you know, anytime we come into an area, the first thing we want to do is, you know, what's the most likely scenario closest to his house? This boat ramp yep. with it being the Missouri River. But I also understand, you know, not too far from here as well as the, is the Hotworth Park where you guys did a lot of family re family reunions. Yeah. Yeah, and we had a camera that didn't show him going through there. It doesn't mean he probably wasn't because you can go over and miss that camera, but yeah. And he might have drove a little slower or took a different yeah. route. Yeah, and honestly, if he went in up there, he could be down here somewhere too, so. Yeah, well, normally the way the vehicle work once it goes in the water, it's going to float for two to 10 minutes. Okay. And we've dealt with vehicles in the Missouri River before, usually no more than 500 yards is where you're gonna find them. Okay. Once they settle in, it's like a turtle. It's on the bottom and then the water just comes over, it creates a back eddy, so it keeps it from moving is what ends up happening. Okay. So even if, you know, a big storm came through afterwards, that vehicle is not going to move. Okay. So with that, we're gonna, you know, go ahead and put the boat in here with this being our most likely. If we don't find anything here, then we're going to move up 
to the park would probably be the next location. After that, we, if we don't find anything there at the Missouri River, my third uh, area that I would like to search is the old catfish rest, uh, restaurant with okay. those ponds with the lakes over there. Yep. So those kind of the uh, direction I would like to go today. And then from there, nothing there. There's a uh, lake kind of to the northwest of his house as well that I saw a boat ramp over there. Okay. That'd be the fourth one. And then from there, we'll just kind of start picking it apart from there. Okay. So that's the game plan for today. Okay. We're going to utilize the uh, daylight and do as much as we can, as quick as we can for you. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm here until, until you guys are done. So. So sounds good. We cool. appreciate you. If you can think of anything else that might help as well, yep. let us know. All right, thanks All right. guys. Thank you guys. No wallet, no shoes. He had a, um, a surgery vac bag that oh, was wow. left okay. there. So he's he had a plan. Right. The way that sonar works is one is going at six miles an hour is one of the worst things we can be doing right now. We actually want to be going at between 1.9 and 2.5 miles an hour. So we're going to turn this and go upstream. But the way that the side scan works is we're just casting 75 feet to the left, 75 feet to the right. Anything that's black water, black is water column from the bottom of the boat to the bottom of the river. This is our down imaging. Same thing. We're shooting 24 feet. You can see the grid lines kind of help you as a reference point as to how far down we're shooting. This is more of a picture in time on the hummingbird. This one, however, is more, uh, this one is live scope. So you can actually see things happening in real time over here. And turn that auto, there we go, that's better. So with this one, if a fish swims by or we come up on a vehicle, we're going to see it immediately. But anyway, the big thing that we want to do is we're going to get turned around and go upstream so we can get a nice solid reading, not at six miles an hour. So we'll come down about 500 yards, maybe six. Let's actually head down to where it starts to bend in the river there, Doug. Yeah. Where that little uh, inlet is at, and then we'll turn and then run the river back up. So I don't envision it's gonna be any further down than this. Yeah. In this current. So let's turn it, and then we're gonna do two passes. We're gonna do this far out from the bank. Yeah. And then we're gonna go down and move over another 75 feet and then do another one. Because it's a fresher vehicle, it's going to read different than like an older vehicle. Right. I don't believe this is a vehicle, but I think it's just like some of these logs because it's so close to everything that we have here. So we're just gonna back up and just double check that one right there. Yeah, and so now that we came to the other side of it, we can clearly see that now that we're on the other side of it, that it was just a uh, log that's in there. One of those poles there, there. So, all right, so we'll move back out a little bit into the river where we were, about 50 feet out. So I think we're about 500 yards or so from the boat ramp in question. And I suspect that right about here where these rocks are coming in, out is where a vehicle should be in this current. So we came down way farther than we need to so we can come upstream to appropriately scan sonar properly. That way we're not gonna miss anything. But my guess is up there by those rocks right there where they're coming in. The other thing you don't wanna do if uh, you're doing this and you're scanning, make sure that you're going directly up the uh, current it is gonna be the best. That way you have the most control over your speed and make sure that you're not scanning sideways across the river because now it's gonna give you like a push downward scan not going to do you any good so always upstream in these stronger current rivers sometimes you'll see us scanning down river as well uh, but that's going to be you know in real light currents where we're not going to exceed that two two to two and a half miles an hour what's the depth right here 25 feet really wow 
That's impressive. Go, so from that line that we just took, we're going to go over 75 feet. That's going to give us an overlap on the 75 feet we just covered over here. And then another 75. And then the 75. And even though we're going to be riding the current down, we might pick something down up if it's there. But mainly, we're more focused on the coming back up. And then for this one, I don't suspect it would be out any further, but since we're here, we'll do one more pass from there as yeah, well. So yeah. we'll do three passes on this one, covering, was that roughly 200 to 250 feet that we'll end up covering. So we're gonna go up here. At, so if we leave here and we're not successful, we're gonna go to? Haworth Park. Haworth, that's where they had the reunions. Yeah. Uh, if our mission is not successful to that point, I, I, I say we do a lot of drone flying too. Yeah. There's like four, four of those quarries together, I think putting the drone up right in the middle and getting an aerial view. It's a white, it's a white vehicle. Yeah. There's a high possibility that it could pop up. What do you think about that? Yeah, based on the current and how far out we are and everything that we've ever found and us hitting 75 this way and how far we are from shore, I don't see a reason for a third pass on this one. No, 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 no. It's, it's never it's been that far. It's not going to have enough speed. Yeah. If it was straight away into here, maybe, possibly, but... But even like Bill, I mean, Bill really went, and he wasn't this far out. And this is a stronger current than what Bill was in. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right here at the boat entrance. Huh? How deep? 15. You got something right here. You have something right here. Is it magnet time? So the magnet is going to be um, in this current. It's really going to go back behind us. I would say monster magnet on this one because the monster magnet is going to a lot more weight. It's going to drop. Oh, you want more weight? More weight on it. Let's go grab the monster magnet then. Yeah. Uh, monster magnet, Josh. All right. Well, so we scanned all of it, and then uh, coming back in right here at the ramp, we have something. It appears to be upside down appears to be larger than a car and it is roughly between four to six feet tall is how tall it is. What we want to do is get a nice solid lock on it with um, and verify that it's metal and then from there we'll just bring that line to shore and then we'll dive on it and put eyes on it and verify things for you. Yeah so we found something here so is it what we're looking for we don't know yet. Uh, let me have fuel just in case so we don't. What do you want it Doug? Uh, set it up. All right. What I remember. That is correct. It is? Yep. Oh. I'm going to see if I can get a uh, reading with the while you're getting that set up. I'm going to see if I can get a reading with the hummingbird. Over. And how deep is it? So if I do this right, where Josh is at, where I'm going, it should be off to my right, is what I'm looking for on side scan. So I'm going to hit this a few different locations or a few different ways on side scan. So now it's going to be on our left, yeah, on our left. where Josh is at. The first one will pop up. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's six feet tall. All right. So right here, we're directly over the top of it. So go ahead and put your magnet down. See if it drops right on it. Like you're. Okay. Now, so now you're behind it. So I'll pull you up river some. Can you see it? Yeah, I saw it. Now I got to get back over to the left though. So I'm gonna take you up here and then we'll drop your magnet and then we'll back into it. Okay. Not moving, are we? We're on it. We're on it. Okay, okay I'm gonna take us to shore. Go over. Okay. Yeah, we're locked. Yeah, it's metal, it's not aluminum. Well, now we put the scuba gear on. Let's uh, go put eyes on it for you. It's been down there for quite a while. It's not the vehicle. Trying to make my way around to the front of it. 
He's making his way around the front of it now. If I had to guess, it's either an older uh, Volkswagen or an RX-7, I can't tell. This one is clear and not our target. It's clear, it's definitely not our target. There is no plate on it at all. I'll bring it up. Light up with me. There you can see what it is. It's under here, I cannot make it out at all. Uh. Oh, yeah, red in color. The top of it's already been uh, completely sand blasted over time, so it's probably been down there 15, 20 years. Oh, wow. oh really? So I'm sure we'll get there'll be a part number or something on here. Yeah. Uh, no plate on the back. Nothing on the front. Um, as far as passenger seat, you have a solid log, about yay big around, all the way through the front seat. So mm. nothing that, that was in there I was able to identify. Yeah, but okay. clear what I could on it for you. Just one car. Right? Just one car. Yeah. Okay. How strong is the current on the Missouri as opposed to other rivers that you guys have been working? Um, this one is the one of the worst that I hate. All right, I think we have everything we need. Yeah. Driving into this location, Doug, I'm a little less optimistic, and part of the reason for it is there's lights over there, that bridge where the toll bridge is at. The detective said that they have cameras on there, that he's checked those cameras. But in addition to that, you've got the uh, little house that you're coming past, which, I mean, house means nothing, but you also have the campground. And I just think that this one is too far from his house. Got a single car. I don't think it's going to be out any further, but we'll do the one more pass as we normally do, just to make sure we cover it. And then, honestly, for selfish reasons, I'm glad that there's not a vehicle in here. I just hate the current. So, yeah, let's jump over onto those other ponds. Just a boat ramp on it. Because the road goes around, there's so many locations to go in that you can you know, launch anywhere. So we're gonna have to cover pretty much the entire perimeter and maybe twice as we work our way in. bottom is really smooth so it, what that means is it makes this detecting an anomaly a lot easier and just so smooth anything that anything remotely on the bottom here is gonna pop up stick out like a sore thumb and still so clean no, nothing so far it's really clean All right, sounds good. I like that we have both boats out it really shows that we're using our stuff yes we were going a little bit faster, okay. but it's pointing up like this right here, and it was on our left. So because of that, we want to go put our boat over it at our regular speed of 1.9 to 2.5. It does look like there's a lot of concrete blocks all over the thing. Yeah, and then that's what it could be as well. So we need to identify how tall it is as well. Yeah, and all it is is just a rock in the way that it comes off that point right there. And as a family, missing your, your lost loved one and not knowing where they're at, wondering if they're in a certain place. It's good to know when they're not in a certain place, you know. Our goal is to always find them, but you know, if if our searches become unsuccessful, at least we can leave knowing that the family knows John isn't in the waterways that we searched. You know, at times you just in, in cases like this and just wish you could have got to them sooner to talk to them and maybe change their mind. I don't know. I know that's a thought in hindsight, but it's just sad that uh, things like this happen.
a lot of this, you know, what we were just talking about involving veterans is, is, is a very deep topic. And it's, uh, I believe it's 22 veterans per day, every single day, uh, succumb to suicide on American soil. So it's, um, it's imperative that if, if, if you know a veteran or if you know if, uh, somebody that just got back, embrace them, be there for them, um, talk to them, let them know they're not alone. And um, they fought for this country and they deserve to um, have us citizens that we enjoy our freedom because of them, embrace them and make sure that they're okay. And uh, a, a lot of them, they get back and they, they, not that they don't feel welcome, they just, it, it, it's hard for them to get out of that mentality and they just don't, this world just isn't a real world to them anymore. And uh, they need embracing. They, they need lots of love, man. And uh, it's, it's something that uh, as a community, we need to embrace more step up and give a give a helping hand uh, so even though I wanted to go over to this other lake that was over here with the boat ramp yes. they, they think that it might have um, some gates over there but in doing so we came back to where his house was at and actually found this one right here so his house is over here yeah. in this community and this one is only about a mile from his house mm -hmm. with a boat ramp right oh, there. Nice. So nice. that's where we're going right now. All right, well, let's go check that other one, see if uh, we can get into it. We can get back and look at our GIS maps and look at anything and yep. roll the VMA and get depths of waterways. But yeah, with it being, I don't know what time it is right now, uh, 3.50, 4 o'clock. Sunrise about 8, yeah. 20, So I, I say we can at least cover three more, at least. Okay. With them being smaller bodies of water. These are all private lakes. So we'll okay. Yeah, because if he left his house, then he would have just gone west, and then he could be on Cedar Creek, which then takes you out to these lakes out here that I'd like to get onto. Okay. So, all right, let's go play. It's, it's fenced all the way around. But what about Missouri? Well, that looks fenced all the way around. With security cameras. What's at the end of this road here? The Platte River, not th deep enough. Is there any other entrance in there? What well, it looks like... Oh yeah, there's a bunch of uh, mobile homes back here, huh? So this road is open all the time then. So in my opinion, it's not a high-end community to where it would be a closed gate. <laughs> I see a lot of signs and camps here. Until 6 a.m. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Well, that one marks this one off. We have another one right here. If we would have just gone over the tracks, made a right, you have this little area right here. So the question is, do we have do we have a gate? No, it's we're we're way over here right now. 25 minutes from there. I wouldn't put it 25 minutes at all. I mean, this is coming back to what's the closest body of water these got access into. Yeah, so let's come back closest to his home again. Bring, let's bring back within the five mile radius. That's only about two miles from his house, if even that. And let's go clear those. What if we started at his house and then did the turns that he made? Well, we're, I mean, we're close to making those turns. We just bypassed this house by a few feet. Have you guys had any rainstorms uh, between then and now? No vehicle, no vehicle. You can see the bottom there. Over there, nice and shallow, you can see it. He's not getting over there. No. So that way we can actually see parts of the bottom right here. And you're not getting into that one. All right. I don't know where to go next. So we're in the 
cul-de-sac right here. And we have the no trespassing signs with the chain that's up. No entry on that one, no entry on that one. All right, so there's nothing that's been disturbed there. The only place you can go in and, and get away with it is the Missouri. Yeah, I agree. The Missouri's not close. Yeah, so I mean, this, this one was too shallow, so we ruled that one out. That one, um, too far off with no tracks going in with the other houses around it, so that one's ruled out. And then we can't get to this one because you just have the walking trail right here behind us. So that one is ruled out there as well. So, and then that quarry had the gate on it right there. So that takes that one out. The catfish lake then. Tony talked to them and somehow ruled it out. Okay. Let's see where he went. I mean, I, I'm, I'm still drawn to it just because he spent so much time up there when that restaurant was open, knowing that it's also abandoned. If it was the drive that I, think was where the old restaurant used to be there was a gate up let's head up on 75 then we'll take the first exit thir 34 and then we're going to make the first right onto 8th street we'll take 8th street down to i just checked that out the lake down there this lake yeah it's just a small fishing pond okay yeah it's just a little fishing pond okay so then so then if we come back up, knowing that he went to Haworth or Hayworth, Hayworth, quite often that would be on 34. So then is there any type of quiet access once you cross over there? Yeah, so then we're just kind of, you know, we're breaking down everything on this side and that just takes us back down to the boat ramp. And then we came back up and we were looking at this side, but my understanding is that one's too shallow. And so then we're just kind of looking at knowing that if we go to Hayworth Park from time to time, are there any other bodies of water that we may have missed heading back up that direction? Besides the boat ramp that we were at over there on Dock Road this morning, is there any other location? Or are there any other access points that he feels like might have been a little more quiet? We were breaking it down. Would he have crossed over into the Iowa side? And if so, if so, were there any boat ramps on that side for him to jump into? We really didn't see anything over there either. Other than this one little access right here. But just thinking that way, I mean, he's already in pain. I'm, I'm not seeing him driving all the way to the other side just to drive into the river right here. My thought is, you know, if he makes his way far enough that direction to the river, you would have chose the river. The only other thing is, do we run another 500 plus yards further than what we ran this morning? I don't Wait, out? No, farther down from where we went. Like, I don't see it going farther than 500 yards. All right, let's go over to Docker Road, put eyes on that one, and then put heads together from there. Sixth Street, then turn left onto Main Street. Turn left onto Main Street. Well, we'll put the drone in there just to, I mean, if, if something's in there, you'll be able to see it. Okay. You already in the air, Josh? Yeah. It's like a little cove right there. So this is where this dirt road ends. Yeah, you're in the same spot. The dirt road ends right here. And then it kind of comes to the water a little bit. And then there's a little house and trailer and any dock. Yep, so just uh, past the three trailers and then the cove comes around. So come come back this way. This is very shallow right there. Right here. At the point over here. Before you start up at the other three trailers. So you should have three more trailers up here. No, they're behind me. Oh, well then you need to be on the other side of them. Okay. So go down here, because there's a set of trailers over here, and then you have this set of trailers here. So just past this set of trailers here, over here and there, that's what I'm interested in right there. So let's go check that one out. Okay.
Thank you. Okay, 20 feet deep right here already. my own piece on this one. We're not that far from where we stopped earlier, so I'm gonna go hit the rest of this real quick. So where we stopped earlier today, Carson, is this little slough right here. So we know that we've covered everything from that slough up to the other boat ramp. We continue to learn new things like, is a vehicle actually gonna go farther than we actually think? So that's why I was talking to Doug earlier about it. I was like, what if in this scenario, we either have this boat ramp or it just ended up getting pushed further than we expected it to. So I'm really happy that we came back to this location and we're able to cover this extra spot right here. Oh wait, I have a vehicle there. What? Oh, I, I think I might have a vehicle. Right, right when I turn. Let's see if I can pick it up again. Yeah, you see that popping up on screen? Yeah. That looks like a truck. And it's off you to the right. The, you can see the bed. You can see yeah, the top so, of it. Yeah, so it's off to the right. And now, watch this. Let's see if we can get back over the top of it. Okay, so it's kind of right in line with that log right there. But I'm not getting like I'm not getting like a solid reading and a lock right over the top of it. it so, I, so I'm, I'm trying to decide how far out from shore it is. Is what I'm trying to get right now. Yeah, what I'm going to do. Because I know it's like right there, so I want like a good reading. So I'm going to circle around and get a good reading coming up river with it. Yeah, see this this may be our target. Is This is how it reads funny because it's fresher. But, but I think that we might have found the SUV we're after. It's not buried. It's upside down and it's the height of the SUV. right at that log. I, I have video for you right now. Okay, let's go. Uh, I'm going to swap you out for Doug and we're going to go put a magnet on it. I have what I believe is an SUV. Okay, so it's right where we thought would be the end of where we should be searching this morning and it's right where we turned around this morning. But I've got some pictures, I've got some video, so let's uh, take a look at it. You guys want to pull that in just a little bit, Josh? What we have is, this was going backwards, um, nice and slow, but what we have is we have the wheels are facing up. So this, this is, in looking at this, this is side scan. So when you're looking at side scan, this is the right side of it, this is the left side of it. So you can see a little bit here, but I zoomed in on it here. So you have the vehicle is upside down. Um, that was a backwards motion. So now I turned and I went back up river. Oh, this was the same. So this was taken from the same. So this was your upside down as well. Oh, okay. Right there. Yep. Upside down. So, th so this is the down imaging. Okay. This is the side imaging splitting it in two. So I was right over the top of it. And then this, this one is just that one maximized. Now I wanted a good clean reading as I was going upward. So with this one, it's not buried in the silt, so it gives the fresher appearance, and you can see the wheels are facing upward. And then I ended up taking video for you, so you can see 
So here it comes. It's pop that there, huh? So it's, uh, we're splitting it right there, so we're right over the top of it. And here it is right here as well. So then you take the, so you take the height of it as well. And so there's your 22 and 15. And so it's taller than a car. So you're looking, if you're almost touching 15, and then you come down between those two, so it's about six to seven feet tall. Oh, really? So Doug and I, we turned around right there. We said, you know, this is going to be the maximum. That's right the exact moment we turned around. So we didn't pick it up another four feet. We would have yeah. picked it up this morning. So, I mean, I guess we're, so we're not we're not saying this is it. I'm just saying this is a fresh air. In my opinion, this has not been down there that long. Based sure. upon. Yeah, so we're going to go put a magnet on it right now. Okay. And then we'll suit up and let's go put eyes on it. Is it easier to access it from here or this morning's? Location. This location right here. Okay. Um. All right, so we're gonna pay attention right at the end of this log here. Okay, so I'm coming up on it right now. So there's the SUV upside down. We're right on top of it right now. Which side should I go off? The right on top of it. Right on. You're gonna go off the right side. Now, go ahead and drop it down. Let me see where it's at. Okay, so I can see, so it's really dragging behind, so go ahead, go ahead. I want to see how far it's going to, all right, so hold it there. So you're going to be 12 feet is the drag behind. So don't go down any deeper. I'm going to take you past it. And when I took you past, it really pulled your, your uh, treble hook back up. Like you're now at 12 feet, whereas you were at 18 feet. So we want to be this far out. Take you 25 feet past it. Okay, now I want, huh? You want me to go back down? Now I want you all the way on the bottom. So I'm going to hold position here and I want you all the way on the bottom. Let me know when you're on the bottom. Are you on the bottom? On the bottom. All right, now we're going to go backwards and I'm trying to try to put you right over the top of it. Under us right now. Okay, that's good. And then you're you're only like eight feet away from it, maybe ten feet. So, and we're coming over it right now, so I mean you should pull right into it. Are you on it? Maybe I'm on it. Yeah, I mean you should be right on it. Maybe. Nice and solid. And pull it, yank it, make sure it's hard. Nice. Put 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 your buoy buoy on it real quick, just in case you lose it. All right, well, you lost the buoy. Is your line on it now? My line. I mean, you got this other line on it? Yeah. All right. There goes the buoy. Let me see if I can just get you to shore real quick, and then I'll come back for you. I'll go save that. Yeah. And I got it. All right, you got that. You got that. All right. Come back for a minute. Ah. Oh. Big thing is we just want to make sure it's like go go around this big rock right here behind you, so that way it's like really tied off and. Like that one there. It's not. All right. Let's go suit up. Now at this point, you shove ears on me.
him down. Ten four, head back up top side, and we'll we'll relocate it. You know, when we when we dropped our treble hook, we hooked obviously the tree log, which is right near the car. Um, but it's not like as a diver he can swim around that immediate area. If he lets go of this line, he's gone. So he's gonna have to make his way back up, and we'll have to relocate it with a magnet and uh, try again, and or wait for daylight. That's a lot of work. Your uh, line is upstream further than where this SUV is at. Really? So we were stuck on your grappling hook. Okay. So I was wondering because you took this whole orange line from me and I was like, oh my God. So luckily we had another line. Yeah. I mean, cause we should only be out like 30 feet here. Yeah. So, so I'm going to attempt to just shimmy straight down and straight over. So pull your orange line. And, uh, back and up. Can you stay on the line though? I'm going to go just on, on the rocks. Hold on to the rocks the best I can. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you're gonna take the orange line down with you? Yep. All right. And attempt to find this blind. I'm going straight down over here. All right. Because this is not where I want it to be. I know what you have is like 10 feet out. You have that other uh, carabiner that you're stuck on. So I'm gonna go undo that for you. Okay. I'll come back and I'm going straight across from that log. Sound good? And just turtle it until you run right into it. One, yeah. Horizontal until I run into it. It's a strong current too, so I hope I can do it. My thing is, I, I, I don't want you to waste your time. Yeah. And I want you to be safe. It's safe. And the only thing preventing from doing it like with an automatic is putting the monster magnet on it. Yeah, yeah, I get that. We just we just didn't get it. Like, so we I know. snagged a tree log instead. I know. You, you don't so. you don't want to wait to put a monster magnet on it. And I mean, if I if I can just go, I've gone sideways before. Okay. Like this, right off of the bank. Right. I said we're just 30 feet out, so as long as I can get on it and behind it, I'm gonna be just fine.
going out there blind on this target is tough. Just it's, it, it's going to just show his level of experience and uh, lack of intimidation he really has for diving. He's got a special gift. All right, I'm really flat. I'm gonna pull the slack out of it as soon as you give me the go. All right. Oh, there's a lot of silt in there. Wow. All right. I'm gonna to try to stay inside of the vehicle, at least to the upper outside, and see if I can go for a plate. It's a strong current here. It's kind of dark down here, so I'm trying to get my feel. Oh, oh, okay, I got a plate. I'm working on the plate. I tried to rip the plate off. I can't see the plate. I'm only doing it by film. We have confirmed it's a white SUV. We have not confirmed the plate yet though. I got part of the plate off. There we go, I got the plate in hand. Plate is in hand. All right, I'm backing out. Coming over. It's our vehicle. It is our vehicle. Somebody's gonna need to go get him. He has the plate in hand. And we got a flash that they can turn on. Current is really strong. Okay. The back window is the only place I was able to make it to right now, just okay. to get that plate and verify. Um, I'm feeling like the windshield might be busted out because of the amount of current that was coming through there, but I've not been able to confirm. We have the back hatch is open, so the front of the vehicle is facing up river. The uh, hatch is open at the back with the back window 
on that hatch is also busted out. A lot of sand is already inside, so you're dealing with an extra four or five thousand pounds yep. inside the vehicle right now. Here's of that current. I would not suggest that we do lift bags as well as that back is open. So um, even with that, the big thing is going to be to identify if that um, front windshield is out. And if we have him in there, we don't want to be popping any windows. If the front windshield is intact, I would almost suggest that we bring it out from the backside so that way we can turn it and pull it up the bank and everything sideways and that way we're not losing anything out the back. They're working on getting u tan down here for the dive team tomorrow. We'll have extra boats if you need them. Okay. With the fire department. And I got my admin working on a tow truck. <coughs> All right, ex excellent. So the uh, extra boat will really be to, you know, keep anybody else away, make sure that the boats are, we'll probably just put one on anchor about another 20, 30 feet out directly from the side of the SUV. And then we'll have another, the one that will be hanging with them that once we break free as divers and they can back up so two boats would be perfect for that <coughs> for that the bugs are delicious here by the way <laughs> tastes like chicken <laughs> uh -huh. john hardy will put together a team you know and if they them. and if they want to take lead you know i mean we're, we're definitely no cowboy so you're the expert okay yeah. i appreciate that to play to the finger. yeah um, yeah and you, nine o'clock nine o'clock is perfect Okay. And then, um, yeah, pretty much we just 2J hooks right on there, and then we'll okay. bring it right up the side. But the big thing is definitely a uh, nice rotator, so that way we can do this right and preserve anything that might. So if we can't get a rotator, if we were to pull up a regular tow truck with a winch, absolutely not. You because and the reason for it, you have four to six thousand pounds of silt inside right now. Okay. So Let's check out that bank over there tomorrow. See if it'll hold up a truck. Yeah. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, over it there. should hold it. And then, and, uh, and one thing about a rotator, a rotator will be able to boom out. So if it can't get right on the bank, it'll be able to set up near the bank, mm -hmm. put some cribbage down. Uh, the cribbage will help with the soft. Uh, the floods we had in 19, you know, yeah, check it over yeah, there, yeah. It's not a bunch of washouts yeah. or something up there. Yeah. Worst, worst case scenario, I mean, it is floatable. It's just, it's just hard to contain it. I mean, if, if we if, if we floated it, we would have to anchor it to like a tow truck. Right, plus we're gonna have to put four bags on it. At, yeah, at SUV back. with the extra weight. Thank you guys though. Again, like <laughs> oh, this is possible because of you guys. I know we're here, and, but it's Thank you. Yeah. yeah, all day long we've been searching and yeah, it's because of your guys' hospitality. This is possible. Thank you, Jennifer, for yeah. <laughs> her devotion to getting a hold of you guys. It really was I don't, Jennifer. I don't care if you're wet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. She got this whole thing going. So yeah, fing fingers crossed. He's you know seat belted in. these in there. And everything's coming out tomorrow. So yeah, it's gonna be a tough night. I'm sure. We'll do it as quick as we can tomorrow for you. Okay. Time to. We have that answer tonight. We'll get the rest of the answers tomorrow to identify if John is in there and we don't want to lose John. Regardless of whatever we do, if he's in there, we don't want to lose him. So because we're only dealing with uh, somebody that's been in there for two weeks, we're not dealing with you know any decomposition or anything. He's full, he's whole, solid. I think what we need to do is just start popping windows one at a time, identify if he's in there. And if so, I just get a line around him and we just bring him up and out. We have him separate from the entire vehicle. We don't have to worry about anything else. Now we can spin we can do whatever we want to that thing and destroy the vehicle to get it out so take a second line with me just under the arms around him so that way it's cinched up nice and tight and then i'll come up with it all at the same time okay. it so. takes out the probability of him coming out or at any, any time we're doing a recovery you can't count for the unaccountable one. and in that scenario the unaccountable could mean losing him Take care yeah, of him first. Got the name yeah, home so I can get them called and uh, down here. Yeah. Talk to the county attorney yet to see if he wants an autopsy down here. Yeah, so so based on that, I would change the uh, tow truck to at least one o'clock so that way we can just take care of what we need to take care of first and then we can do proper rigging on the best way to get it out of there from there. Other than that, I'm good to go. I know what the mission is and the game plan. And 
check it out. Let's make it happen. Okay. Yep. Uh, no, I think if uh, we just back you up a little bit, I'm gonna put the nose in here, then I'm gonna put my trailer up there. guideline at the back yeah and we're going to be at the front window and I'm grabbing coming out and popping my biggest thing is I don't want you to get stuck underneath our first main line okay if you so if you want me to cut that first line loose when you give the okay I can do that yeah yeah so just I'm not letting go of the line I'm, I'm gonna you at that point the line you're taking is gonna be the anchor line yeah so just know that you may have to release that other one if for any reason you get tangled up in it I got you so, cool. Divers down. So, just for safety, we had the uh, Fire chief, he's got his boat up there as a perimeter. No boats are going to come in. And then we'll have a second boat over here shortly that will be able to intercept Jared and John if John is still in there. Ten four. I right, read you no. loud and clear. Okay, he's at 15 feet now. All right, I'm at the back of the vehicle. Oh, God, this is so He's at the vehicle. So he's at the back of the vehicle now. It's kind of like a little eddy out of the current. Yeah, the current is just way too strong on the uh, driver's side here. All right, so the driver's side, he can't get to his curse too strong. He's gonna try the passenger side to see if maybe there's a little bit of an angle that's blocking the current. I am off the line. And I'm gonna check the uh, passenger side to see what I can do over there. If there's any over there, I hope so. So he's on the passenger side at the rear wheel now. All right, the uh, second row window is up. Passenger uh, front window is up. The windshield is intact. Back window on the passenger side, windows up. Front window is up. Windshield intact. There's too much silt inside for me to do anything. From the Oh yeah, I spilled up the entire cabin here. Alright, so right now our only option is on the passenger side here. For a wheel. Let me see if I can get a line to the uh, driver's rear by chance. By reaching around. The entire cabin's filled with silt. Which could be a good thing. He's coming up. So we're gonna we need to hold on to this real tight. Yeah. 
the uh, inside completely full with sediment, Tony. What I mean by that is with that back lift gate in, me trying to get into the back there, you have maybe 14 to 18 inches of sediment from the roof to the back. The front windshield and all four side windows are intact. So as long as we pull the entire vehicle backwards, we'll pull him out there. If he is in there with all that sand and sediment, that curtain is really strong on that side. It's gonna kill me doing it. But in addition to that, we pop a window. He's not coming out, he's buried. Yeah, he's just like cement at this point. Yeah. So let me do two yellows. Let me have a zip tie on the end of each one of those. Yeah, I yeah, gotcha. And then the locking carabiner on it as well. And then, and then I'll take the other side down that has the, I think Jared, that has the zip ties and go through the wheels and bring it back to the locking carabiner. At the end of all of that, on the, that third locking shackle, is let's just run a new line so that way I'm not having to move any lines right now. Once I get this hooked up, then let's just pop down one more time to hook up top of this line. And then I want one more line just like it so that way we're pulling two separate pull points on the same wheel. Okay. So you're gonna get that rigged. You want this blue line prepped to go down the line waiting for you when you come back up? Or, or are you gonna switch one of these lines to that? You know what, go ahead and marry um, one end. One end to this right now. All right, and I'm, so now you're gonna have three lines going out there. So, yep. yeah, I will feed this to you as you go down. Yep. Wait a second, wait a second. right through with the zip tie. Good job. So I'm gonna have to back down the orange line. No fine. Just heading back around to the where the rigging is to get a locking carabiner to marry that cribbed red line that's around the other wheel. So if you watch, there's bubbles that come on up right here. See him? Yeah. He's 
basically right here. Right. By the time the bubbles get out there. The bubbles are coming up 30 feet past where he's at. Yeah. yeah. Solid. Okay. Okay, I'm happy with that. And how you doing on the air? Alright, well I'm coming up. I got your blue. How are you doing? There's no reason for any other type of workout <laughs> in the mornings or the evenings, Doug, on this entire trip, as long as we're going to be diving. No. <laughs> All right. I'm happy, not happy. Forearms are on fire. Air is down to 758. The line that I just came up on, yeah. red line, solid lock to this line with a locking shackle. I'm really happy with it. What I would love to do is see if we can break it free with one wheel. With the one wheel. So is it going to come and do what we need to get it closer or do I need to put another line on it at that point in time? Right now, the biggest thing is I'd love to just, just see if he can turn it and do what needs to be done. Leave these two lines on. That way, so no matter as, what. As, as he turns it, it's going to create a buildup 100% on that side. Huge. Yeah. So the farther that he can boom out and the more that he can lift up, the better. Regardless, we're, we're pulling on that one side no matter what. Okay. All right. So there's no getting to that other wheel. There's zero getting to that other wheel. Like, we have to move it in order to get to another wheel. So and there's no getting the lid shut on the back. Not, not at all. Huh? No, the, the, the lid's not shutting at all. No. All right. Lid's not shutting. No hitch on the back. This is our only wheel. So he's gonna get more resistance. All right, I mean, so from there, if he's moved it, I can put another line on it now before we uh, put anything up. So you've moved it about 10 feet. Let's try to get another line on it. Oh, because it, maybe it's got buildup. You dragged it. So what are you going to put the J-hook on? The axle? Okay. Because it's probably like this now. Yeah. And then once we get it up here, he's gonna rig all four wheels and then you'll lift it right up, right? turned right now I couldn't get into a good eddy to fasten that like that's really ripping right out this side of it see what you can do to just keep pulling it in and then we'll have to go back down on that one to see if we can position it better kind of so, but so go with ahead the boom explain. by keeping the boom up it allows the vehicle to lift rather than lift and come over and up rather than plowing in the higher that boom is mm -hmm. so what we're going to do is we're 
because this is our one line that we have on it right now, we're going to tie another knot in this line. Yeah. And that way he has more cable to pull again. Okay. And see if we can get this closer to shore. Oh yeah. She's moving. I can feel it on the orange roll. Oh yeah. Come on. Come on. Coming back up to cable, or for us to pull into. This right now. Turn that other line down to the uh, other rear wheel. Does that work? That works. Run the other line down. Yeah, we're gonna get the other line down to the driver's side rear wheel. Right now. Yeah, let's it here. Best to lift it up and over there so that they can do what they need to do instead of being right here on the rocks. Um, I'll double check real quick. These windows are definitely not. Yeah. Um. A lot of emotion, a lot of emotion, but this is why we do what we do. I told them there's a body in the car, not identified yet, okay. but they are relieved to be and wanted me to make sure I told all of them. They're, they're grateful, very grateful for everything you guys have done with us. Thank you. We need all the This is a uh, horrible thing, but best case scenario. Best case scenario for the family, and now he can properly be laid to rest. I ain't telling these boys that there's a lot more, less tense. Yeah. More yeah. yeah. So Anytime you have really answers where there wasn't answers, it's a it's a step forward. 
you know, it's never closure, but it's, a, it's at least a step forward, you know. You guys are great, Thank you, man. It was, a, it was a fight, but we got it, you know. We were everywhere yesterday. I don't know. I don't know. 15, 20 different locations. Five hours in and out of the water. And yeah, yeah. Ended up back where we started. I found them. What were the odds of that? You know, they, they, it was just meant to be. It really was. Right back. We searched for 12 hours, like you said, in and out of the water, and then we ended up right back where we started our search. And it's ten right feet there. off. It's, yeah, ten feet off. Ten feet off. <laughs> thanks, man. Thanks for all. Yeah, thanks thank for all. My, my hands are. Off. Don't matter. All right. We all get dirty. Yeah. This makes recovery number 11 now, and none of this would be possible without all of you and your support. Whether you're just a viewer or your donations as well, we do have links in the description down below as to ways that you can help. We thank you for being here and putting us in this position that we as a team, as well as all the local law enforcement today and all the teams that came together made this possible. Thank you again. We're gonna be down the road seeing who we can help next. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks, bye-bye. Thank you.